Have you ever pondered how an ordinary man from a non-aristocratic background can ascend to the peak of an empire's power? Today we delve into the life of such a man, Trajan, born as Marcus Ulpius Trajanus in the unassuming city of Italica, modern-day Saint-Ipence, Spain. He was far from the aristocratic corridors of Rome, yet this ordinary man's extraordinary journey took him to the very apex of Roman power. His rise, shrouded in enigma, defied the societal norms of his time. A non-aristocrat, he climbed the ranks of the Roman military and politics, navigating through a world dominated by blue bloods. His relentless pursuit of power and influence, coupled with his astute political acumen, set him on a path few could dream of, let alone achieve. But how did he do it? What propelled his ascent? Join us as we unravel the intriguing journey of Trajan, an ordinary man who became one of the five good emperors. Born in 53 CE, Trajan's journey to greatness was not a straightforward one. Indeed, his path to the apex of Roman society was fraught with trials and tribulations. The future emperor was born Marcus Ulpius Trajanus in the humble province of Italica, now modern-day Santipons, Spain. His family, while not of aristocratic lineage, was respected and influential in their community. In the Roman world of the first century, societal norms dictated that power and prestige were the exclusive domain of the patrician class. Yet Trajan, with his humble beginnings, would shatter these norms. His early life was characterized by a fierce determination to rise above his station, a trait that would serve him well in the years to come. His first taste of the Roman military and political arena came when he joined the Roman army. Trajan quickly distinguished himself as a capable and dedicated soldier, catching the attention of his superiors. His tenacity and strategic acumen saw him rise through the ranks, from a humble legionnaire to a respected military leader. His military successes were testament to his leadership capabilities and set the stage for his future political career. Parallel to his military career, Trajan began to make his mark in Roman politics. His adept handling of diplomatic matters and his skill in navigating the intricate maze of Roman political life did not go unnoticed. His reputation grew and with it his influence. But it was not just his military and political acumen that set him apart. Trajan was known for his fairness, his respect for the law, and his commitment to the welfare of the people. These qualities endeared him to the masses and earned him the respect of the elite. He was the embodiment of the Roman virtues of discipline, integrity, and civic duty. The seeds of greatness were being sown, setting Trajan on a path to power. His journey had just begun, but the experiences and lessons of his early life had prepared him well for the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. His rise to power was not a result of chance or birthright, but of merit and determination, setting the stage for his reign as one of the five good emperors. Trajan's rise to power was a testament to his unwavering dedication and strategic acumen. This man, born Marcus Ulpius Trajanus in the humble surroundings of Italica, Spain, was a far cry from the aristocratic elites who typically held the reins of the Roman Empire. Trajan's journey to power was far from conventional. His family, though not of aristocratic lineage, held a respectable standing in the Roman military. This served as the stepping stone for young Trajan, who embraced the soldier's life with open arms. He swiftly climbed the ranks, proving himself to be a leader of men and a tactician of the highest order. His military prowess was matched only by his political savvy, as he navigated the treacherous waters of Roman politics with the grace of a seasoned diplomat. A series of triumphs on the battlefield solidified Trajan's reputation as a formidable military leader. His victory in the Dacian Wars, a series of brutal conflicts against the Kingdom of Dacia, was a turning point in his ascent. It was a display of strategic brilliance that caught the attention of the entire Roman Empire, including the reigning Emperor Nerva. Emperor Nerva, a man of advanced age and frail health, was seeking a successor. He was drawn to Trajan's military success, his political acumen and his popularity among the troops. With no sons of his own to inherit the throne, Nerva adopted Trajan as his son and heir, setting the stage for Trajan's ascendancy to the imperial throne. This marked a significant shift in Roman politics, as Trajan was the first emperor to originate from a province, a departure from the Roman-born leaders of the past. 
It was a testament to Trajan's undeniable talents that he was able to break through the barriers of tradition and birthright to secure his place as the leader of the Roman Empire. Through grit and determination, Trajan found himself at the helm of the Roman Empire in 98 CE. His ascent was a beacon of hope for those born outside the aristocratic elite, a testament to the power of merit and dedication over birthright. Trajan's reign was marked by prosperity, expansion and significant social impacts. Marcus Ulpius Trajanus, or Trajan as we know him, was a Roman emperor like no other. His governance was a testament to his military prowess and his deep sense of civic duty. Under his rule, Rome touched the zenith of its territorial expansion, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Arabian Sea. His successful military campaigns in Dacia, now modern-day Romania, and Parthia, present-day Iran, not only expanded the empire's boundaries, but also brought in an influx of wealth. But Trajan wasn't solely a military man, he was also a builder, a reformer, and a patron of the arts. His public works were grand and ambitious. Who can forget the Trajan's Forum, an architectural marvel that was the heart of public life in Rome? or the magnificent Trajan's Column, a towering monument that chronicled his victories in Dacia. These were not just symbols of his power, but also of his commitment to improving the lives of his subjects. Socially, Trajan's reign was transformative. He implemented policies aimed at the welfare of his people. The Alimenta, a welfare program designed to assist orphaned and impoverished children, is one of his greatest legacies. This was a man who cared about the future of Rome, who understood that a strong empire is built not just on military victories, but on the well-being of its citizens. And yet, despite his triumphs, Trajan was not a man of hubris. He was a model of humility and modesty, a trait that endeared him to the Roman populace and earned him a spot among the five good emperors. His rule was a golden age, a time of peace and prosperity, of cultural renaissance and societal progress. Trajan's reign was not only successful, but also left an enduring legacy. His name, etched in stone and in the annals of history, is a testament to an emperor who ruled with justice, wisdom, and a deep sense of duty to his people. All reigns, no matter how glorious, must inevitably come to an end. And so it was for Marcus Ulpius Trajanus, better known to us as Trajan, the good emperor of Rome. As the years wore on, Trajan, the non-aristocratic soldier emperor who had risen to the pinnacle of Roman power, began to show signs of waning health. The once vigorous leader who had expanded the empire to its greatest territorial extent and implemented extensive public welfare measures found himself increasingly debilitated. In his later years, Trajan embarked on a military campaign against Parthia, a venture that would be his last. It was a hard-fought campaign, one that stretched the resources of the empire and the stamina of its emperor. Despite initial successes, the campaign took a toll on Trajan's health. Towards the end of his life, Trajan's physical strength diminished, but his mental acuity and his commitment to the empire never wavered. He continued to rule, to strategize, to dream of a greater Rome, even as his body betrayed him. In the summer of 117 Common Era, Trajan breathed his last. His death in the city of Salinas in Cilicia marked the end of a remarkable reign. His adopted son and chosen successor Hadrian succeeded him and the transition of power was, by the standards of the time, relatively smooth. The immediate aftermath of Trajan's death saw a period of mourning throughout the empire. He was deified by the Senate, an honor reserved for the most revered of emperors. His ashes were returned to Rome and placed in the base of his column, a towering monument that still stands today as a testament to his accomplishments. Trajan's fall marked the end of an era, but his legacy lived on. His policies, his architectural projects, and his vision for Rome continued to shape the empire long after his death. He remains, to this day, one of the five good emperors celebrated for his justice, his military successes, and his dedication to the welfare of his people. Trajan's life was a testament to the power of dedication, strategy, and leadership. Born to a non-aristocratic family in Italica, modern-day Saint-Ponce, Spain, his rise to power was nothing short of extraordinary. Against the odds, he maneuvered through the ranks of the Roman military and politics, eventually ascending to the highest seat of power in Rome. His reign from 98 to 117 CE was marked by a sense of justice and understanding. 
He was one of the Five Good Emperors, a title that speaks volumes about his leadership and the social impact of his rule. But even the mightiest fall, his decline and eventual fall from power were a stark reminder of the transitory nature of power. Yet, his legacy endures, his life story serving as an inspiration for many. From a non-aristocratic background to one of the five good emperors, Trajan's life continues to resonate as a remarkable journey to power.